Good morning, friends, and welcome to a back to school edition of Facebook Live this week. I'm Taylor, and I am joined by Nick. And today we thought, in honor of back to school, we would talk about one of our schools here at the New England Aquarium. So that's what you're seeing in the window right behind me. Nick and I are currently standing on the spiral of our giant ocean tank, the New England Aquarium's largest exhibit, which is home to this school of small mouth grunts. The small mouth grunts are the yellow and silver striped fish that you're seeing behind me. And we'll talk a little bit more about our grunts, but the reason that we wanted to share their story today is because as our human friends are heading back to school and adjusting to new situations, we thought that we would share a story of some fish that have had to do a lot of adjusting over their lives with us here at the New England Aquarium. So our larval fish have gone through their own sort of graduation here at the New England Aquarium by being raised through our very own larval fish program. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the grunt's journey and the steps that they go through. Um, and a little bit more about schooling fish in general here at the New England Aquarium today. What do you think, Nick? Sound good? That sounds like an excellent idea. Awesome. Would you like to start us off with a little bit of uh, a background about our larval fish program and smallmouth grunts today? Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that at all. Awesome. So, for those of you that are familiar with the aquarium that may have visited us before or have even been viewing some of these uh, virtual Facebook Lives, uh, you probably know a little bit about our giant ocean tank, but we'll just give you some of the basics to get us started. So this is the largest exhibit here at the aquarium. This tank is 40 feet across. It's 23 feet deep. It holds 200,000 gallons of originally Boston Harbor seawater. And the habitat that it is depicting is a healthy tropical coral reef habitat. Um, in order to match the conditions um, and the dynamics that are found on a reef, we are featuring about 900 individual animals in this exhibit and pretty close to about 100 different species. Now, those numbers can be a little bit dynamic. They can change from day to day, week to week, <laughs> month to month. But uh, in recent times, they've been sort of right around there, 900 or so individuals, um, 100 different species. Now, while each individual animal in this tank was chosen mm -hmm. as an ideal community representative of a healthy tropical coral reef, um, they've all had sort of different pathways to get here and different stories. And again, if you're a fan of Taylor and my Facebook Lives, <laughs> then you probably learned a little bit about that in our most recent past Facebook Live, where we talked a little bit about some of the different ways that animals come here to the aquarium. Uh, but again, like Taylor was mentioning, we're going to focus on one particular animal, uh, and that is the smallmouth grunts that, again, you see on the screen in front of you here. And um, Marissa's going to zoom in just a little bit so you can get a, get a better view a of nice them. Nice close-up shot for you all. That's so right. really appreciate how beautiful they are. Yeah. So, uh, with the goal of becoming a more of a sustainable institution, which we've had for a very long time, we've had that goal for a very long time, we're always looking to make improvements. And one of the ways that we thought we could become a little bit more sustainable, especially as it relates to our collection practices of animals, um, we decided that we would start a larval fish rearing or growing program, essentially. And we thought an ideal candidate would be the smallmouth grunt. And so Taylor's gonna kind of expand a little bit on the specific details of how these grunts here actually made it into the giant ocean tank. Yeah, so we do have a number of different species, as Nick mentioned, that go through our larval fish rearing program. And so this particular story that I'm about to tell you is unique to our smallmouth grunts. So back when we decided to uh, choose this species, we determined that breeding for our smallmouth grunts would happen best in a separate tank outside of our giant ocean tank where there's a few less stressors and they can just focus on laying eggs. So we selected a group of adults out of our population from the giant ocean tank. And those adults were sent to our Quincy Animal Care Facility for some evaluation. And once we've determined that we had a nice big group of healthy adult smallmouth grunts, they were sent to our partners at Roger Williams University. For those of you that might not know, Roger Williams University also has a pretty robust fish rearing program. 
So they also have a setup that's kind of just perfect for schooling fish. And that is exactly what you're seeing with our smallmouth grunts. So those adults were sent to Roger Williams University and Andy Ryan and his team took over care of those fish and got them to lay some eggs. And this is when we got to see Andy's larval fish expert skills really shine. They grew those eggs up, those fertilized eggs, hatched them out and then developed those little larval fish, which I know sounds pretty simple when I say it like that, but believe me, it's very, very complicated in order to get larval fish not only to hatch, but then survive hatching and grow up to little fish. So his team took care of those fish for a little while until they were about a few inches long, a few months old, and then they sent them back to our Quincy Animal Care Facility, where our Quincy Animal Care team took back over the larval fish rearing process, got them a little bit bigger, and then some of those guys actually moved into our larval fish exhibit, which is on the first floor of the aquarium in our Blue Planet Action Center. So next time you come to visit us here at the New England Aquarium, make sure you check out our larval fish exhibit. And you might actually get to see some of these little itty bitty smallmouth grunts. Now, because they're juveniles, they continue to grow in that exhibit because they get lots of care and delicious food and eventually they will outgrow our larval fish exhibit. And then they move back to Quincy and they do some more growing in Quincy, usually about seven to eight months worth of growing before they are finally big enough to move into their final home here in our giant ocean tank. And they join this glorious school that you're seeing here behind me. So lots of trips back and forth, lots of growing, uh, lots of graduating from one step to the next before you even get to enjoy them here in our giant ocean tank. So it's a pretty, pretty intense process in order to get this school that you're seeing here behind us, which is, I think, one of the reasons we really wanted to share that story with you today. Yeah, you're not kidding, Taylor. So uh, there's a lot of uh, adjustments that these fish have to make over the course of all those steps that Taylor was just talking about, um, just like all of you humans are adjusting to some <laughs> new ways to go to school this fall. If you think about the journey that these fish made and think about the steps that Taylor was just describing, they've had to get used to new habitats at every place that they've stayed. Their caretakers have had to adjust to different types of food that they prefer at different points in their growth. Mm. Just like us humans, when we're younger, we eat certain types of food, certain consistencies of food. When we get older, that changes. These things all change also for these fish as well. So again, aquarists, caretakers have had to adjust that. They've had to anticipate tank size, light levels, water current levels, all the kind of dynamics that are necessary to keep these fish comfortable as they're growing. That's really, really important. So big shout out to our aquarists, our caretakers, especially Monica down in Quincy and her team who worked really hard to get yeah. these fish through their, uh, through their growth to a point where they can graduate into the giant ocean tank. Uh, but we'll also mention that they are not alone in our giant ocean tank as graduates of this larval rearing program. They're actually one of several species that have gone through that program. Other species in this tank include lookdowns, and we actually just recently added just over 100 or so lookdowns to the tank that came through our larval rearing program. Other examples include blue, excuse me, blue chromis. That was blue really hard chromis. to say. Blue chromis. Um, uh, other examples include uh, shark nose gobies and neon gobies, which oh, if they're guys. in the tank, yeah, like Taylor was showing, they're usually the smallest fish that we have on exhibit if they're in the tank, so they can Only be hard to find. Only a couple inches long? Yeah, like yeah. pinky size, right? <laughs> I usually think of pinky size, yeah. Um, other fish include striped grunts, so uh, another species of grunt that looks a little bit similar to these grunts. Um, and then also a striped burfish as well. So lots of graduates. Mm -hmm. And we're so proud of this program at this point in our giant ocean tank. Uh, Nick, about what percentage of the fish in the giant ocean tank came through? That's what I was just about to say. How did you know? I don't know. You it's got like an I idea. Read the script. <laughs> so, Taylor, <laughs> let me tell you, it's about 60%. 60% of all the fish in this tank have come through this larval, larval rearing program, fish growing <laughs> program, another way to say it, right? Um, and on top of that, our smallmouth grunts themselves make up just under 50% of the population in this tank. So we're obviously really, really proud of that. I think that's showing that we're 
uh, really far along the path towards achieving that goal of better sustainability when it comes to collection. This means that in order to supply the, uh, the animals for this community here, we can be a little bit more selective in the wild. We don't have to um, collect as many as we might normally collect. We can really rely on that larval rearing program to supply a lot of the population here. So that's great. Okay, pass it back over to you, Taylor. Awesome. Yeah. So friends, we did also just want to give you a couple of heads ups about some things that are going to be changing here for us this fall at the New England Aquarium. You know, there's lots of changes happening in your homes, adjusting to new schedules. And speaking of new schedules, we have a new schedule here at the New England Aquarium. We are adjusting our hours. So we're gonna be opening a little bit later on most days. In fact, most days we'll be opening at 10 a.m. But we're also gonna be staying open later on Friday evenings until 8 p.m. So we're gonna do some aquarium after dark. You may have already seen some content on our social media pages about this. So if you're interested in coming to visit us here at the New England Aquarium, and we certainly hope that you are because we would love to see you, make sure you check out that timed ticketing and adjust to those new time slots. So a little bit of change of hours and hopefully some opportunities to see some cool stuff here at night at the New England Aquarium. Um, also speaking of some things that are coming up, we are gonna be adding an additional video series to our suite of programming for you. Don't worry, you're still gonna go live with Nick and I on Fridays and you're still gonna see our virtual visit content earlier in the week. But we are gonna start a series that focuses specifically on some of the more advanced science and research happening here at the New England Aquarium with folks from across the institution. So hopefully you'll get to meet a few more faces here at the New England Aquarium. So keep your eyes out for that as well. And you said, you said a suite of programming, yes. but it's also gonna be suite programming too, <laughs> just to be clear. Yeah. Thanks for that, Nick. Yeah. Well, I think at this point now that we've kind of shared the story of the smallmouth grunts and told you about some things to expect in the fall here at the aquarium, let's open up the floor to questions. Do we have any questions out there this morning, Marissa? How many smallmouth grunts are in the ocean? How many smallmouth grunts are in the giant ocean tank? All right, so let's do some math. Warm up those uh, back to school mm, brains. Here we go, let's see this. So, Nick said there is a little over 900 individual fish here in the giant ocean tank. And our smallmouth grunt school makes up about 50%. So that means, Nick, about how many smallmouth grunts are in our school? About <laughs> 450. There it is. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, so we estimate we have somewhere between 400 to 500 smallmouth grunts in our giant ocean tank right now. Again, as Nick mentioned, those numbers fluctuate a little bit. They have natural lifespans just like us humans do. So that, does, that number does go up and down. And as uh, we mentioned already, occasionally we get some additional smallmouth grunts joining that school. That's right. Yeah. Great question. This started us off. Do we have another question out there, Marissa? Right now. Okay. Well, we'll give uh, our visitors a couple seconds to, to add any questions if they have some ideas. Yeah. yeah. Get a Zoom nice in on those grunts. Look. So if you uh, take a close look on the uh, video screen here, you'll notice that the majority of this school is those smallmouth grunts that Taylor was describing, but you may also notice one or two other, what we refer to as conspecific. So there are actually other species of grunts um, that will school within this school, but then there are also other species altogether that might join the school as well. Schools, as we've talked about in other Facebook Lives, right, Taylor, are a powerful tool for fish to protect themselves, to move efficiently throughout the water, uh, to sort of seek refuge together. And so- Efficient um, feeding. Efficient feeding, right? All sorts of good stuff. Yeah, and so other species might sort of join schools like this at times. In um, fact, if you wanna learn more about schooling fish, you can travel all the way back to last September when whoa. Nick and I did a Facebook Live video all about schooling we fish. We sure did, not too far from where we're standing here. Exactly, actually, yeah, too. just yeah. down the hall. That's right. Do we okay. have any additional questions, Marissa? Nothing right now. So okay. I guess maybe just one last thing that I'll point out for you because I think it's really cool because usually people don't associate fish with noises. 
is you may have been wondering why they are called small mouth grunts. Well, I think the small mouth part might be pretty self-explanatory. They do indeed have pretty small mouths, um, but the grunt part actually belongs to that bigger group of fish that Nick was mentioning. He, he pointed out that there are a few different species of grunts actually in this school, and they are called grunts because they make a grunting noise. So there you go, fish well, my, my that make is, noise. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, my instinct is to demonstrate that. I'm not going to. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Just once. Thank, thank you for that, Nick. Um, and they do, they do this actually with internal organs that they vibrate within their bodies, which I think is really cool too. So there you go, something to look up today, fish that make noise and, and you can actually hear it demonstrated on the internet, maybe slightly better, maybe not, than Nick just well, demonstrated. Well, hopefully better. <laughs> Don't you think that would make for a good future Facebook Live? Oh, fish that make fish noise? Fish that make noise. So like my, my instinct is to expand on that right now, Taylor. I'm sure we could talk about it, but we'll hold off on that. I was going to say, start it, rehearsing your so fish sounds now, Nick. In the business, we call that a little bit of a teaser <laughs> for future, future Facebook Lives. Yeah. Awesome. Should we wrap this up, Nick? I think that's probably a good okay. idea. We've done enough <laughs> this morning. Everybody's got to get back to schooling. Yes. Um, yeah, so while you guys are all adjusting to uh, new ways of learning this fall and uh, new ways to pay attention to your teacher and get used to your day, hopefully you guys can take some inspiration from the, the story that Taylor and I just told you about the smallmouth grunts and their wild and exciting journey to graduate from our larval reeling program and make it into the giant ocean tank. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Stay tuned for future programming like Taylor was describing and have yourselves a great day and a great weekend. Thanks friends.